Allah tells us three reasons why people disbelieve on the Day of Judgment. What are those three reasons? Number one is because we lack self-accountability. Is there anyone amongst us, Yehwati, before going back to sleep, we think about everything that we did that day. All the, all the good that we did and we thank Allah for it. All the bad that we did and we seek repentance from it. Is there anyone who does this self-accounting every day? Number two is because we are in a hurry all the time. Everything has to be done now. Oh Allah, remove this evil from us right now. Oh Allah, give me good right now. We are very much in a hurry. We are unable to have patience. The third reason, ya ikhwati, that Surah Qiyamah tells us why we forget about the Day of Judgment is because we forget about death. We forget about the moment we will die. Ya ikhwati, I remember the statement of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He went to Rasulullah and said, Ya Rasulullah, are we going to have our intelligence and our logic and our mind in the grave? Meaning just like we can think now. Rasulullah sallallahu said, yes, you will. In your grave, there is no one who enters his grave except that he will have his total presence of logic and mind in his grave. This is Surah Qiyamah, one of the most eloquent surahs in the Quran. If you were to read it in the depths of the night, you would be filled with so much fear of Allah Azzawajal and so much realization of the reality that we are all heading for. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the one who is Ar-Rahman, the one who is most merciful to all creation, Ar-Rahim, the one who is merciful specifically to the believers. La uqsimu bi yawm al-qiyamah. La means what? No. So why is Allah saying no? I don't swear by the day of judgment. It's a bit like in, in the English language when you say no, I don't. I'm not hungry. Of course I'm hungry. It's like saying almost no, but what you actually mean is of a surety you do. I don't swear by the day of judgment, meaning of a surety. I swear by the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the great king, he swears by the day of judgment when he will judge all of mankind. 27 names Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to Yawm al-Qiyamah. I don't swear, meaning of a surety, I swear by Nafs al-Lawwama. The Quran tells us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created three types of nafs. The first and the highest level are the souls of the Anbiya, the souls of the highest of the ulama of Islam, which is called a nafs al mutmainna Then comes nafs al-Lawwama. What is the nafs al-Lawwama? The second type. This is the self-reproaching soul. The soul that does wrong, but then takes itself, itself to account. Astaghfirullah, I did that sin. Ya Rabbi, forgive me. This is the soul of all of us here. If they are amongst us, nafs al mutma'inna, glory be to Allah, you are from the highest of human beings. And then the last type of soul, the third type, is called nafs al ammaratun bisu, the soul that is completely full of sin, engrossed in sin. And these are the souls of disbelievers or the souls of the worst of Muslimin. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by a nafs al lawwama. He swears by the second type of soul. Why? Because this is the soul that has the best chance other than the nafs al-mutma'inna to succeed on the day of judgment. Does mankind think that we will not be able to gather his bones together? Bala, of a surety, of course we're able to. Qadirin, meaning I am able to, I have total ability. Ala an banana, even to put him back to the tip of his fingers. At that time, the Sahaba never knew that the tip of our fingers are special to each one of us. They never knew about fingerprints. But here, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "I am able to put you back to the tip of your fingers, O human beings." All He has to say is, "Be, and we will be." The power of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is unbelievable, unmatched. بَلْ يُرِيدُ الْإِنسَانُ لِيَفْتُرَ amama. So how is it, O mankind, that you wish to sin in front of me? Knowing that Allah is in front of you, we still sin in front of Him. يَسْأَلُ أَيَّانَ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ So in arrogance, 
and haughtiness and pride, he asks, when will the day of judgment be? That they wish not to believe, and so in their disbelief, they make this arrogant statement. Tell us when will it be if it's true? So Allah tells you when it will be by its signs. He says, فَإِذَا بَرِقَ الْبَصَرِ When the eyesight is dazed and hazy and shaky from the tremendous earthquake of that day. وَخَصَفَ الْقَمَرِ And when the qamar, which is the moon, has an eclipse. Why will there be an eclipse? Because totally the sun will run out of, of light. So therefore the total eclipse that will happen, this is the final eclipse. وَجُمِعَ الشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرِ And the sun and the moon have come together. Meaning the sun has expanded so much that it has mixed in with the moon until there is no more. The sun and the moon is only one body now. On that day, mankind will scream out and say, Where is the escape? Some of us will hide under the, under the table. Others will want to run out. Some of us will stay near a pillar. Others will want to look up to see where it's falling and then go away. Kalla, no escape. La wazar, no escape at all. Ila rabbika yawma idhinil mustaqar. On that day, the return is back to Allah. Meaning, you'll be running around seeking where to hide until you will realize there's no way to hide at all except with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يُنَبَّأُ الْإِنسَانُ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ بِمَا قَدَّمَ وَأَخَّرْ On that day, mankind will be told about what they have left behind for this dunya and what they have left for the akhirah. What have you left for the akhirah? You know the mushkila is we tend to love the dunya far more than the akhirah. Let me give you this, this example. When a rich man comes to your house, what do you tell your families to cook? Get everything out. Compare this to a poor beggar coming to your house. You get angry with your wife. Why did you cook more than two dishes? Because we love wealth and we love this dunya more than the akhirah. Until you treat people not based upon their level of level of their richness in this dunya until you start treating people upon the level of taqwa in this dunya and the akhirah taqwa fear of allah your love for the akhirah will not be complete <laughs> rather mankind is ever a witness over himself <laughs> even if he were to give a thousand excuses you yourself know whether you are right or wrong so you don't need Allah to give you your book of deeds on the day of judgment. You don't need the angels to tell you. You don't need Allah to tell you. You know yourself in your heart whether you're right or wrong. Jannah was not created for perfect human beings. Jannah was created for sinners who repent. And the critical thing about repentance is regret. Regret is repentance. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moves on to tell the Prophet sallallahu not be hurried. Because remember the second reason after the first reason of accountability, lack of accountability, is number two is what? Is that we are in a hurry all the time. So Allah tells Rasulullah to not be in a hurry. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا تحرك به لسانك لتعجل به. So do not be in a hurry to recite this Qur'an. لتعجل به In order to recite the Qur'an very quickly. So ikhwati, the scholars of tafsir understood this verse to mean, that the Prophet ﷺ, as soon as Jibreel would come down, as soon as Jibreel would recite, the Prophet would recite right after him, very quickly. You know, straight away he would want to recite. And that is why the scholars of Tafsir say, it is disliked. Some even say it's haram for you to recite with the Qur'an when the Shaykh is reciting. What should you do? When the Qur'an is recited, keep quiet and listen. Do not hurry up by moving your tongue with this, with this Qur'an لِتَعَجَلَ بِهِ in order to hurry up memorizing it إِنَّ عَلَيْنَا جَمْعَهُ وَقُرْآنَ meaning it is my responsibility of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi to ensure that I gather the Qur'an in your heart and to make you memorize it upon your tongue I will ensure that this will be in your heart so don't be in a hurry the Prophet Sallallahu would, would be in a hurry because he'd be afraid that Jibreel will go back and then he might make a mistake in an ayah that's why he was in a hurry فَإِذَا قَرَأْنَاهُ so when we recite it, meaning Jibreel, I and my angels, when we recite it to you, وَإِذَا قَرَأْنَاهُ فَاتَّبِعْ قُرْآنًا Meaning keep quiet and listen to its recitation. And that's what we should do as well. When we are listening, we listen, and then we recite after it. 
Don't be in a hurry to recite. Thumma inna alayna bayana. Then it is upon us to explain it to you. So therefore, recitation is one thing, and the tafsir is a second. And that is why, my brothers and sisters in Islam, my sincere advice to you is to take the tafsir of the Quran. Kalla bal tuhibbun al ajila. Kalla, rather nay, tuhibbun al ajila. You love to be in a hurry. You love to be always in a hurry. The Prophet ﷺ said, to be in a hurry is from the shaitan, except in three things. Number one is to do good deeds. Number two is to bury the dead. Number three is to get the young ones married. The Prophet ﷺ died. He was buried before the next salah came. Today, we don't hurry to marry the young ones off. And this is a big mushkila. Today, we want degrees and PhDs. And you leave aside the day of judgment. On that day, faces will be bright and shining. They will be looking at their Lord. That's why their faces will be bright. The greatest tragedy of entering Jahannam is that you'll never be able to see Allah. And on that day, some faces will be basir. It means distorted. Why? Because of the fear that the faqira will be done to them. What does faqira mean? So faqira means something that breaks the back. Kalla, rather nay. The third reason. Death, isn't it? We've forgotten death. Look at the description of death here. Ya salam. Kalla, idha balagati taraqi. Rather nay, when the soul has reached the collarbones and reached the throat because we know that the souls will come out of the mouth right help help someone save my father he's dying and it is said who will save him and the soul knows that he is about to die the human being knows he's about to die when, when it, the time is to come that's it Alas, you're gone you, nothing's going to save you no doctor no hospital nothing is going to save you I want to tell you something it's very very important before everyone thinks we're going to get a chance to say La ilaha illallah at the time of our death. Let me tell you something. vast majority of us will not get a chance to say La ilaha illallah. So Ikhwati, this is what you're, you're hoping for. That's a, that's a figment of your imagination. vast majority of people will never get the chance to do it. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, be afraid of your death. He said in one authentic hadith in Bukhari, he said, if you knew what I know, you would not bury your dead. Verily, death has its trials. Verily, death has its pain. Death is not easy, ya khuti. Please stop thinking you're going to have an easy death. Oh, I know my uncle, mashallah, what a beautiful, peaceful death he had. Who are you fooling? What the heck do you know? Only Allah knows what sort of tragedy and difficulty people have at the time of death. Kullu nafsin da'iqatul mawt. Every single soul will taste death. وَظَنَّ أَنَّهُ الْفِرَاقُ And the soul knows that is the moment of his death. What does that mean? And the shin has been intertwined with the shin. Your legs are intertwined with the legs. In the authentic hadith in Tabarani, it is reported that the Prophet ﷺ said, there is no human being who enters a grave except the grave until his ribs intertwine and his legs intertwine. This is what our Prophet has promised us. Ila rabbika yawma idhinil masaq. On that day, is the return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلَا صَدَّقَ وَلَا صَلَّى He never gave charity, nor did he pray. وَلَكِنْ كَذَّبَ وَتَوَلَّى Rather, he lied and he turned away. ثُمَّ ذَهَبَ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ يَتَمَقْطَى Then he went to his family and he had a great time. أَوْلَى لَكَ فَأَوْلَى Woe to you, O human beings! Or woe to you! ثُمَّ أَوْلَى لَكَ فَأَوْلَى Thereafter, woe to you, woe to you again. Does mankind think that they will be left alone? Allahu Akbar. Alam yumna. Was he not a nutfa, a small piece of fluid that flows from the body? What was he? What were we? We were nothing but this clot of blood. Thumma kana alaqatan. Then was he not a clot of blood? Thumma Then he clothed it and then he put flesh on it. فَجَعَلَ مِنْهُ الزَّوْجَيْنِ الذَّكَرَ وَالْأُنْثَى And he made from it a human being, a male and a female. 
Is not he who is able to do this? Be qadirin, able to ayyuhiyya al-mawta, to give back to the dead.